I think I made a huge mistake with the Carniolan Hive, and because this channel is what it is, I'm gonna share it with you so you don't do this. Okay, so the full story on the hive. This was my rock star hive. Carniolan Queen was doing amazing all summer. She came out of the winter really strong. Uh, I put her down into a single deep with a queen excluder, and then I just supered her all summer long. By the end of the summer, we had five supers on here. This hive is a monster. They're storing all the way up here on the fourth super. I came back after what I thought was the fall flow to five virtually empty supers, about four and a half empty supers, and there was n half the population was gone and there was no queen that I could see. I did see down in the brood box some emergency queen cells. This is not full of honey at the top. Be very sad if Carniolan hive swarmed. Oh, that's, that's not good. Not a lot of honey in this hive. There's our, there's our queen cell. Come on. Is there a queen in here? Something probably happened to the queen. And they probably tried to make a new one. It doesn't look like it worked. And now they're queenless, just defending their hive. We definitely lost one hive there. That's, uh, that, I don't know what happened to corn, uh, the Carniolan hive. That was thriving. That was my biggest, best hive three weeks ago. But I searched and searched and searched, and I did not see a queen anywhere down in the brood box. So I put everyone back together. The next day I came out, and we did a combination with one of my resource hives that I had that had a laying queen in it. So what we did is took one of the resource hives and did a combination, a paper combination here. So we put the resource hive frames, we had eight good frames from the resource hive down here with a, a laying queen. We took the, the empty queenless hive and put it on top with paper between and left them with some resources that is a, that's above the, uh, the inner cover so they could rob resources down. But this was a week ago we did this, and I'm gonna go in here today and just see what happened. I lifted off the super. I saw that there was this, the laying queen was still here, and these bees in here just kind of were hanging out. But this box was vir virtually empty. The queen from the resource hive was laying in here. There was larva and a, a marked queen. So after I did the combination, determined there was a laying queen down here, there were still a ton of bees up here on the super. And I couldn't figure out why they were up there. And they were, there was just a lot of bees up there. And I thought it was because all the honey was up there. So these frames were partially capped or, you know, there were a lot of resources in there, but they didn't fit down in the bottom. So we just left them above the inner cover for the bees to rob. There she is. All right, so this queen was an introduced queen. This is a queen I got from Vermont Bees, the Singing Cedar Apiary Queen. And she's right there. Tons of larvae in here. So she's laying, she's alive. A lot of young bees on this frame. So she's got her little colony here. So I would say that they are combined. The inner cover on and then again put those um, the super up above them for them to rob. Because this is a pretty heavy super here. So one thing about the Carniolan Hive is I had put... Yeah, they're all up here. I had put all their honey up top here for them to rob out. And they're all up here. They're, they're, it's like they're clustered up here. And I don't want them clustered up here. So there's, so there's a ton of bees up here. Uh, and I want them to be down with the rest of their sisters. So I need to get them down below 
and then move these frames out for temporarily because I want to just feed them straight up into these boxes. I wanted those bees to go down with the rest of the hive so I could start feeding with syrup so they would start filling these boxes with syrup. So I decided to just shake these bees that were up here down into the hive. So I removed the inner cover, removed the super, and I shook all the bees I could down here. All right, the population is mostly back down in there now. Then I took the partially empty super frames down to the house. I figured I'd give them back to them at some point, but for now I'm just gonna give them syrup and let all the bees kind of hang out down here with syrup on the hive. Now, when I got down to the house, I noticed that one of the frames from the super had brood emerging from it and I couldn't figure out why there was brood up in the super because the, the laying queen was down here and you know, I, I was like, why was there brood up above here in the super? But I thought, well, whatever, I'll just bring it back up. I'll leave it in there for the brood to emerge and go back down into the hive. So I left that frame of brood up here for the bees to let them, like, let it hatch out and go back down. Then I went and I watched the video and I tried to figure out what had happened. And I went and rewatched my footage and here's what I think happened to this hive. So the likely story is this hive swarmed at some point at the end of August, maybe early September. There were queen cells down in the lower brood box. So one of those queens emerged, flew out on a mating flight and came back. And instead of going back into the, the brood box, I think she went back in to the upper entrance into the super, the pile of almost empty supers above a queen excluder. And I think she went back in there and she just started laying. So there was a laying queen up in the supers, that stack of supers that I never even looked at because I was just taking them off to look in the brood box to look for a queen, put thinking they were just, you know, supers. So I did the combination and I think the new queen down here was fine because that queen was still up in the super above an inner cover. Not a queen excluder, but above an inner cover. So there was enough separation that she didn't go down there. The bees that were up with her stayed with her and the bees that were down here combined with the new queen. But then I did the thing I did wrong was I took all those bees not knowing there was a queen, not even thinking there could be a queen up there and I shook them all down into these two boxes. So if there was a laying queen up in that super, which I missed, she went down here about three or four days ago. Now, I haven't been in the hive since then, but I'm gonna open it up now and see what happens. So we're gonna find one of three things. We're gonna find the swarm queen that was created, which was the Carniolan daughter queen in here, and a dead introduced queen. We're going to find the Carniolan queen either dead or gone and the introduced queen from the resource hive is still in there or we're going to find two queens. But either way I hope there's at least one queen in here that is laying, there's brood, there's healthy bees. I'm going to keep feeding them. If we have two queens maybe I can split them up again and just have another nuke again but we'll see. So the moral of this story is when a virgin queen flies out, she can come back and go up to the top entrance above your queen excluder. So if you don't find a queen down below in the brood box, make sure you look at all your supers too because she could be up there. And I did not do that. So what I did when I came back and found that frame with some brood on it is I just put it up here with the syrup so that they could... Uh, they could let the brood hatch, like tend to the brood, because there were there were bees all over it. Why is oh? We got this glued shut. Wow, they they're making new comb up here. Look at that.
They're making, they're, they're filling this out to draw this out. And they're filling it with syrup. So that's exactly what I don't want. So I'm gonna take them off now. That's pretty beautiful. But we don't want them building comb up here. We want them hatching out that brood. All right, let's see what's going on. Very complicated hive right here. I saw a tiny bit of brood on one of these frames when I brought it back down to the house. So I brought it up here for them to let, so they'd let it hatch out. There it looks like there's still some brood on there. So I'm, I'm expecting now to see a queen up here again. Did she come back up? Yes. There's our Lang queen. There's our Carniolan queen. So that's the, uh, that is the uh, story right now. She's up on her brood laying. I mean, she looks great. That's totally a Carniolan queen right there. Hmm. All right, first order of business now that we know we have a laying queen up here is to see if the other queen is down there and she's alive. And if she is, I think what I'm gonna do is just take that box down below that was the original resource hive that I brought over here to combine with, bring them back to where they were and just leave them as a, an eight frame deep for the winter and then let this hive have their eight frames up here and then just feed, feed them like crazy and then this will be the Carniolan hive again with their, their current queen that's up here laying because they, uh, they got this under control. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna take this whole thing off the top, see if that um, other queen is, laying, is down there alive and laying. Okay, there is a queen over there. So now, do we have a queen down here? And if we do, then we get, we get two hives out of this. There she is. <laughs> okay, folks, we saved the day. We have two queens. So we have a laying queen down here. We have a laying queen over there. Boom. I gotta go get another bottom board, another lid, and another inner cover. And I'm just gonna split, these, split the bees back up. Okay, here goes the switcheroo. This is the Singing Cedars Apiary Queen that was a resource hive. We brought them over here, combined them with another hive, but now we are taking them back. And they are super light, so they need a lot of food. They are gonna get head heavily fed. We got a lane queen in here. So this hive spent its whole life living here now they're here. Queen is right here. So I'm gonna just push them all over together. So this is how they're gonna spend their winter. And they need food, they need a lot of syrup. So I'm gonna feed them right away. Just gonna give them a reducer. All right. So the Carniolans. I'm gonna give them a medium on the bottom because the queen is currently laying in a medium. She's down low and I want, that, I want her to move up into a deep. So this is how they're gonna go through winter. Um, this is actually the comb that was in here before I split them up. So these are the frames that she's laying on. Just wanna make sure she's here. There she, uh, yeah, she's right there. So Queen is right in there. She's going right back in. This is her hive now. There's brood in here. There are resources in here. This is gonna be a very strong hive. So now what I'm gonna do is put the deep on top to hopefully encourage her to move up over the winter time. 
Watch out. So now we got our deep up high. This is winter configuration. All right, that worked out better than I, I could have hoped. There's no brood in this, that's just comb there. Okay, Carniolans, you are back as Carniolans. So that's, that's pretty awesome. That's really, really amazing. It all worked out. Okay, I need to feed them. They need food on here right away. So once again, let the bees keep themselves. Let the beekeeper screw stuff up. But I hope I just fixed what I messed up. So we're back laying queen, back to Carniolans, back to having that other hive as its own hive and a laying queen. They just need food now because both hives are extremely light. Uh, and here we are. So that's, that's my story. I hope you learned something because I know I did. Thanks for watching. Something probably happened to the queen. And they probably tried to make a new one. It doesn't look like it worked. And now they're queenless, just defending their hive.